Hey, this is Augie, Augie's Locker Room. When you come to the store, you're going to see things that you've probably never seen before unless you've been to a museum. Great items that go back to the Rockney era to the present. Website, augieslockerroom.com. Visit us here or the website. Day seven of preseason camp here at Notre Dame. Tim Priester with Tim O'Malley. I had the defensive side of the ball. We didn't have much time uh, like usual with the first five periods, but Tim, what did you see uh, offensively? You know, I found the definition of overkill. It was Blake Fisher and Michael Mayer against the scout team tight end on the edge working a combo block. So that was the most exciting part. I, I did watch a lot of the offensive line because Harry Heastan, Harry Heastan and Chris Watt split sides. And uh, it was good to see Heastan really get into Blake Fisher and Josh Lug and the next rep through being able to praise them and tell them what a great job they did because he was all over Fisher for pad level and lug for not locking out and then the next time through he, he was telling how great of a job they did and then Watt is a little bit uh, kinder soul on the other side when he's correct but he, he does he steps in and corrects people he corrected Spindler a couple times but you don't hear what he's saying quite as easily so yeah. I can't comment on that yeah defensive side of the ball I focus mainly on the secondary and two guys that stand out to me not surprising I, as I was looking at the cornerbacks Cam Hart looks really really good I mean this is a guy that his length, I mean, when you add his length with his ability to mirror a receiver, he's really good. And then the other guy is Jaden Mickey. You know, so like a guy like Barnes, you know, is a little bit longer and yep. getting out of transitioning out of a cut is a little bit more difficult. Jaden Mickey's a little built closer to the ground. He is really lightning quick out of his out of his breaks. And so those are two guys that stood out to me in the secondary. Yeah, I try to watch the running backs as much as possible. I think it's because Dylan McCullough brings you over there, the way he coaches with his voice and, and his attitude. He had them going through um, drills where they're ball security drills, but he also had them going through through the sled and uh, wanted Audric Estimate to get lower. Logan Diggs going through the, going through the cage, the sled, with his shoulder the way it is he they, he's not holding back right now I mean it's it's interesting to see he also took part in briefly I'm not sure he was supposed to he took part in a drill where you're you're smashing hand pass protection right. drill and he took shots to his pads well, the sled is new because the other day when they did it he was not participating yeah he, he went through both uh, he went down and back both times uh, when they went to spin moves that's where he got the most credit I was mentioned in pre previous practice report Logan Diggs spin move is just a little bit quicker it's it's elite really and the first really the main compliment McCullough gave was the spin move by Logan Diggs but the best news is that he's taking some sort of contact red red jersey still but he's taking some, right. some contact interesting to see the defensive line just like a few minutes into practice collectively they're running sprints from sideline to sideline. I don't know if somebody made a mistake or if that's just a, a conditioning thing, but leading the way, not surprisingly, defensive end Isaiah Foskey. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a freak list out there and he's not on it, which doesn't make sense. But maybe, maybe you can't repeat. I'm not sure what the rules are. But I, I, I want to point out real fast on our walkout, Joe Wilkins – not participating with the wide receivers, but he is wearing pads and just going through. He is going to be the most well. We, I was talking with Tyler Horka from Blue and Gold. He's going to be the most well-conditioned athlete on this team by the time the season yeah. starts. By the time he's available, and Avery Davis, I, I, I don't really. I guess I guess I didn't pay attention to him the first time through. He has no ill effects that, no. that I can see out there. So, wide receiver depth is going to be an issue until they're all back. But if nobody gets hurt, wide receiver depth won't be an issue in the first couple weeks of the season. Recently, Al Golden said some really good things about Jalen Sneed, had an opportunity to focus in on him a little bit. It was mainly a pass rush drill, and you saw some burst of him coming uh, between the tackles up the middle. And I just, I, you know, when you think about the, the player that we saw in the spring, tentative, yeah. not sure what he was doing, he looks like he's cutting it loose a little bit more. I didn't see Jaden Bellamy uh, either okay. with the corners or the safeties I, and, and all the numbers. Uh, matched up. He wears number 23, so I don't know what the deal is there. And it's interesting to see some of the, uh, a few more of the defensive players adding, adding the guardian caps uh, to their helmets uh, in addition to, it's basically all the linebackers now. Um, Sneed is wearing them, Schweitzer is wearing it, um, Leah Fow, and then in, in the uh, secondary, Clarence Lewis. So more and more guys going to that. I don't know if that's necessarily Due to injury or day not, but it's a day three of hitting. Right, yeah. exactly. So that's it today. Uh, 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 instant analysis, uh, per usual, a quick one here outside of the Nordane practice facility.